It's 2008. I just showed up to my best friend's house after middle school, and he's opening up YouTube.com on Internet Explorer. He types in Lizard King, Baker has a death wish in the search bar, and opens up one of our favorite parts. Lizard starts off by sharing his support for weed and Satan while balancing precariously on the top of a railing. And as Cameron's wet wipes begins to play in the background, I take a sip of sweet tea and let the passion take over. But times, to be expected, were simpler then. Skateboarding and YouTube have an awkward relationship now that nobody could have seen coming back then. In the early days of skating on YouTube, you could either watch traditional skate videos and parts, or watch some kid do a quadruple flip in their driveway. But over the last decade, as vlogging and tutorials have become a more popular and lucrative style of video on the website, skaters from outside the core industry have been able to find an audience in this niche that wasn't being fulfilled by the big media and hard goods companies, some even being able to create full-on brands all from YouTube. And as these channels steadily rose in popularity, competing with the biggest online juggernauts like Thrasher and the Barracks, the core industry began to take notice of what these skaters were doing and decided they should do something about it. So they called them corny and shunned them from the cool kids table. They can't sit with us! Years later, these outsiders never went away, only growing even bigger. YouTube is now filled with so much skateboarding content that covers so many types of genres from so many disparate groups, it's hard to imagine what skateboarding must look like to people unfamiliar with or new to the culture. In this essay, I want to attempt seeing skateboarding from this lens by taking a look at YouTube's place in skate media and what kind of content related to skateboarding it promotes. We'll start off with taking a look at single parts, the new bread and butter of skate videos in the internet age. By simply searching for skateboarding on YouTube, your results will be different every day. Because of YouTube's algorithm, the results shift regularly due to the amount of content being uploaded on a daily basis. So to get a better look at what content is working the best on YouTube, we'll filter our searches to find more objective results. When you type in skateboarding and filter for view count, the most viewed single part turns out to be, surprisingly, Richie Jackson's Death Skateboards part, with 9.6 million views, which was uploaded in March of 2016. Followed up by, not surprisingly, Nigel's most popular part, Till Death, with just over 7 million views, and third place being awarded to Aero Antia's Who Cares part, titled as My Skate Vid, an upload from September of 2006 with over 5.5 million views, truly a pristine relic of skateboarding YouTube's historic past. But there's one problem. These are not the top three results in the YouTube search. The very first result is Extreme Skateboarding and Surfing Panther, 35-minute Pink Panther and Pals compilation, uploaded in June of 2017 with nearly 42.5 million views. In fact, Richie's part, the most viewed traditional skate part on YouTube, appears in the list of results at number 26. Vlogs, skits, cartoons, compilation videos, reaction videos, and more take up the first 25 slots, with notable entries including Skateboarding Dog from 2007, I Built a Skateboard Out of 10,000 Colored Pencils from 2019, and Kick Flipping a Glass Skateboard with Glass Wheels, You Make It, We Skate It, Episode 72 from 2016. And speaking of this last entry, I want to bring up the glass skateboard elephant in the room that is Braille Skateboarding and Andrew Schrock the two biggest skateboarding-focused channels on YouTube, with Braille taking the number one spot with 4.6 million subscribers, while Andy takes second with close to 3.1 million, both beating out Thrasher's channel in third, with just half of what Braille has gained with their 2.3 million subscribers. In the view count filtered search for skateboarding we performed earlier, these two channels are responsible for five uploads in the top 25 videos all coming before Richie's part. In terms of overall channel performance, all these channels were created within a year and a half long window in the mid 2000s. But Thrasher's overall video view count of over 690 million is outright dwarfed by the video views for Braille's and Andy's channels at 1.3 billion views and nearly 2.2 billion views respectively. These are even more impressive statistics when you look at the number of videos uploaded. Thrasher has uploaded over 5,200 videos, while Braille has uploaded over 3,900 videos, and Andy, the channel with over three times the amount of video views compared to Thrasher, has uploaded only 2,800 videos, almost half the video count of Thrasher's. Now one thing to note is that Thrasher's video performance online is split between their YouTube channel and their own website, while Braille's and Andy's focus is solely on YouTube. However, this is not the only reason why their performance is so much larger and consistent. These two channels are providing content that obviously reaches larger amounts of people because the videos they create are not what you would call a traditional skate video. 
They're much more a progression of the Barracks' style of content that helped Eric and Steve create the mega media company they have today, making skits, challenges, tutorials, and vlog type videos that are associated with skating, but not videos featuring skating for skating's sake. But why then does Brails and Andy's content outperform the Barracks? The Barracks has always had special access to the upper echelons of professional skateboarding and can put out basically any content featuring certain skaters that's guaranteed to bring viewers in. How do these relatively average Joe skaters gain more eyes than the top pros and media companies with massive marketing budgets? Well, like I said, their content is a progression of what the Barracks created. The Barracks produce skateboarding content that fit well in an online environment like YouTube but Braille and Andy create YouTube-specific content that uses skateboarding as its subject matter. Their content is influenced by what YouTube wants and with topics that are much less niche to skateboarding's focus and much more focused on YouTube's viewers as a whole. Ultimately, for a person new to skateboarding, especially a younger viewer, their content is simply easier to find and easier to watch. So what then does this mean for the future? With this new kind of dominating content, what can we expect for skateboarding five or 10 years from now? particularly since younger kids are already very likely to watch YouTube videos. Will we see the end of traditional skate videos? Will the next generation stop filming tricks and set their focus on creating vlogs? Will the VX lose all its popularity in the community and be replaced by iPhones on selfie sticks? Well, when I started skating in the mid-2000s, there was a lot of talk in the magazines about what wasn't cool and what was going to hurt the culture. Skating was breaking through the mainstream at unheard of levels, riding the wave of the popularity of Tony's video game empire and skate-inspired MTV reality shows featuring the industry's big pranksters and pretty boys. Fully Flared had just come out, and the apocalyptic end of the full length was predicted many times over. Generic etnies roamed the school halls, and my mom saw Jake Brown's infamous slam on the news before I did. There are a lot of reasons to think that all of the crazy things happening in skateboarding and outside sources trying to get in on the action was going to ruin the special thing we all had. But that's not what happened. In fact, it was these very things that introduced me to skateboarding. All of these sources are what gave me my, although watered down and goofy, first inside look into the thing that would define my life for the next decade and beyond. And without them, I don't know if I would have been interested enough to become part of it all. But that was because that's what I was already paying attention to when I was growing up. I liked video games and just happened to know someone who played Pro Skater 4. I liked watching all of MTV shows, and luckily they produced some that starred professional skaters. And it's the same thing now for the young kids of today as it was for me back then. Kids watch YouTube, and luckily enough, it turns out that there's popular skateboarding content all over the website. And some of these kids that get more interested in skating can easily find more since the site allows anyone to pull up an endless amount of skate videos on their phone or on their computer. We need to remember that it's this kind of content that will send kids down the rabbit hole that is skateboarding, just like it did me and my friends over 10 years ago. Without several years of slowly getting introduced to what skateboarding was through the easy to digest content I saw, I wouldn't have been able to see and appreciate the big videos at the time like Fully Flared. We can't forget how important it is to make skateboarding accessible to new audiences and to the next generation. If skating never got shown in movies like Back to the Future in the 80s, we'd likely be missing a lot of legends in the skate community. And so we need to look at this trend in the same way. Skating has changed many times over throughout the recent decades as each generation has its own influences and introductions to the culture. And without those influences evolving, no new kinds of people would find an attachment to it. I'll end with a still relevant quote from Christian Kerr's 2015 Jenkum article documenting the rise of these channels at the time. Most certainly, their market is made up of young and naive kids not yet initiated into the core of skate culture. These are the alienated kids of middle America, suburban sprawl skaters who find more in common with a kid learning stationary double flips in his driveway than with Dill strongly slapping himself onto a curb in LA. The thing to remember is that these skaters grossly outnumber the cool kids of Cali and NYC and they should be reckoned with for sheer volume alone. This has been Alex with Loose Trucks. Thank you for watching. Oh, <laughs> <laughs>
Bruce Martin. This brings us to Bruce, right? Like, check me out. <laughs> Instead of checking, it's like, check out my cock. And I'm riding three wheels. And wrecked. Okay, Bruce. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> this fucking guy. He's taking the shot. He's squirting in his eye. <laughs> Look at his eyes. He's fucking. <laughs> That's awesome.